Lake Mead is drying up. The current water level is at around 1,043 feet, which is almost 200 feet below the maximum height. This means that the reservoir is at only around 25% of its total capacity, and it's at its lowest level since it was being filled back in the 1930s. The last time it reached full capacity was in 1983, and the last time it was nearly full was in 2000. If the water dips another 150 feet, it will reach Deadpool status, meaning there is not enough water to flow downstream. This would halt the dam's hydroelectric energy production end and further threaten water levels at downstream reservoirs. The water level is getting so low that rusted debris, old boats, and even human remains are being uncovered. And it is only getting worse. Projections estimate that the water level will drop another 20 feet in the next year, bringing the lake to only 19% of its full capacity. You may be wondering how it got so low, but first, I need to give a quick history of the reservoir. Lake Mead started forming in 1936, when construction finished on the Hoover Dam, which plugged the Colorado River to form this reservoir. The dam was built to increase flood and silt control, generate hydroelectric power, and provide water for agricultural irrigation and municipal and industrial uses. When at full capacity, Lake Mead is the largest reservoir in the nation and it supplies water to 25 million people in Nevada, Arizona, California, and Mexico. The energy generated by the dam provides power for 1.3 million people across Nevada, Arizona, and California, but it is currently operating at only 67% capacity because of the low water levels. This reservoir is one of the most important in the nation, especially for the Southwest. Now, you may be wondering, why is it so low? There has been a historic 22-year drought in the region, which means there is less water to replenish the reservoirs. In fact, this 22-year period is the worst drought in over a thousand years in the United States. If we are using more water than is flowing to the reservoir, then the water level will drop. Yes, many municipalities use water irresponsibly and end up wasting a lot of it. Yes, these cities are rapidly growing. Yes, there's a lot of farmland in the desert of the southwest, that is growing water-intensive crops, when there is not enough water for this. But we cannot ignore climate change's role in this. There are natural fluctuations in water levels and reservoirs, and there are natural cycles of drought and non-drought. This is not that. This is a much bigger issue that we need to tackle. Climate change is the reason why this drought is so bad, and if we do not stop it, things will only get worse. And this is not an isolated event. Other reservoirs on the Colorado River, notably Lake Powell, America's second largest reservoir, have similarly low water levels. Other large reservoirs in the U.S., including Lake Shasta and Oroville in California, Lake Oahe in South Dakota, and Lake Sacagawea in North Dakota are also alarmingly low. These are some of the largest and most important reservoirs in the nation, and they are all struggling in part from climate change-caused drought. The southwestern U.S. is already in an unprecedented Tier 1 water shortage, which primarily limits the agricultural industry of the area's access to the water. If trends continue, and they likely will, Arizona, Nevada, California, and Mexico will have to severely cut their water usage from the Colorado River sometime around the start of the new calendar year. And more severe water cuts later in the year could impact household and industrial water uses. Now, I'm going to get ahead of some of the comments. Some people will say, it's just the river returning to its natural state. That isn't how it works. A river can't just decide it doesn't want to be a reservoir anymore. If the reservoir is low, it means there's not as much rainfall and snowfall upstream as there used to be. So there isn't the water to replenish the reservoir. Another comment I will surely get will be something like, well, who thought it would be a good idea to build cities in the desert? It isn't like someone decided they were going to construct massive cities and move millions of people to them overnight. Phoenix and Las Vegas, two of the biggest cities in the Southwest, were founded in 1881 and 1905 respectively. These cities have grown a lot over a long period of time, as cities do. Do I think there should be cities in the desert? Of course not. There's not the water to support them. That doesn't negate the fact that there are cities in the desert, though. We can't just tear down Vegas. What's most appalling to me about visiting Lake Mead 
is that people are out on their boats enjoying the lake or taking selfies at the dam with super low water levels behind them. This is an environmental catastrophe with huge ramifications, and people don't seem to understand. We need to take swift action against climate change if we want to stop things from getting worse. There has been some legislative progress recently. A recent Nevada law outlawed all non-functional grass, which encompasses grass that has no non-decorative use, like lawns at residential houses or outside of office parks. Nationally, the Inflation Reduction Act just passed, which is the largest climate bill in U.S. history. Sadly, none of this is enough. Conditions are dire, so we need to take bold action to salvage what's left.